All right, I'm sort of doing two reviews together because they sort of go together if you've been following my plight. Now, I did receive the second software-defined radio. Now, this one here, it comes up with the Russian program in it. It's, all right, that's the Russian program. All right, now, can you hear that? It actually sounds like waves coming in. Now, if I take the antenna off, most of that goes away. This radio is great at picking itself up if you put the little whip on it. All right, see, honest truth, this is the second one I've owned. Now, if you shut the display off, most of that noise goes away. Okay? So, let me tell you the honest truth about this radio. Uh, when, you, when you hold the button down to turn it off, does the code, now it's off. All right, now, the honest truth is, there's a very simple uh, direct conversion circuit in there. Extremely simple. Okay, now, originally a direct conversion radio uh, had some ferrite uh, coils, uh, ferrite toroids wound on the front end. So, the signal would go through them, and only the signal you wanted to receive would go through them. Go look it up. There's many direct conversion sets. Well, this one here doesn't use the ferrite donuts on the front end. It uses a crappy little ferrite bead. And they also give you um, a filter on the audio in this. The chip that they use will do, uh, do audio filter. So when you do listen to the AM broadcast band, it sounds like um, the station's coming through a storage pipe. Okay, it's got a weird sound to it. And that's what direct conversion sounds like on AM. But where direct conversion shines is CW and sideband. Okay? It's easier to tune than a regenerative set, but very similar. Okay? Well, they took a simple circuit and they put a bunch of bells and whistles around it. Just uh, waterfall display, filters, um, attenuators, uh, RF gain. So, basically, this is a pig dressed up in a Vers Versace clothing with lipstick on it. And it's okay for someone that doesn't know any better. But troubleshooting that last one made me realize what I was dealing with. And I bought another one. Like I said, I bought this to dick around with it for at bedtime. Okay? Just something to screw around with. I have my, my DX390. I have, uh, what did I say, 50 radios? I, I stopped counting how many radios I have, how many short waves, how many ham radios. Uh, one transmitter so far. Actually, five transmitters. But one of them is a ham transmitter. Other ones are just rebroadcasters. So I built stuff from scratch. And uh, I bought this, this desoldering thing so I could fix the other one and do other projects. And uh, if, you, if you buy one of these, make sure you put it fully together. Make sure this solder, um, we'll call it the heat iron itself, is hooked up to this before you turn this on. Uh, make sure this bracket is on because when you put this back... There's some type of sensor in here, in this area, that says it's back, and then it goes into sleep mode. Let it go into totally is a sleep mode until this fan shuts off. Then you can turn it off. Do not turn it off until it. Read the instructions. They're very sketchy. And I went on um, YouTube, and I found a guy that did a whole video, but he won't tell you what temperature to set it to. Well, I talked to this guy, and he told me he, it wasn't that it was a secret. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What a piece of crap video okay uh, I tell you this is centigrade now you set it at 340 centigrade to start with this makes it go up in temperature this makes it go down in temperature and this is your airflow read the instructions go watch some videos before you touch this the reason you can't operate this there's a sensor in this handle if you turn this on without this hooked up this thing might go into into meltdown I don't know I don't want to try it Okay, I, I followed the instructions. I went and looked at some videos before I even turned it on. But I didn't know that this bracket had to be on here to shut it off. Okay, as soon as you put this back on here, uh, you'll see the display come up, uh, sleep or... Uh, it's got three letters to come up and tell you it's going to sleep mode. And after the air blowing through this, cools it down enough, you'll hear the fan shut off. Okay, but... 
two, two, two um, projects basically sort of hooked together. But this thing, if you go on YouTube, you'll see people use an outside, a shielded piece of wire on a big outside antenna. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you have a really good antenna, a ham antenna, that antenna is tuned. So that's a tuned circuit that this radio doesn't have. And it makes this radio work even better. And that's the problem. Okay, you're seeing the guy uh, demonstrate it. Now, the waterfall display has very little noise on it when he's showing it to you because he used shielded wire to get away from this radio. Okay, now this, that rushy noise, you see all those peaks? That's the radio itself because it's, it's, the noise is coming off the display and it's going back to the antenna. And that's why when I was trying to troubleshoot the radio, it kept going into self-oscillation. You have to hold it in till the code. Come on. Come on. This software is the older than what I have. I didn't put this in. Wow. Sometimes it just goes on and off. It doesn't do the code thing. But anyway, it, it, this one came with software. This one came with software that's beyond the brick software. There's some of these when you buy them come with a software. It's a demo software. And I was so confused. Am I doing something wrong? Uh, it was very hard to tune it to any frequency because it was in demo. You had to, you had to turn the encoder. You couldn't, you couldn't do direct entry. Now this unit has a problem with direct entry. It doesn't always work. Or the software that's in here. Okay. Uh, you should be able to hit, you should be able to touch this up here. There, that's direct entry. Sometimes that doesn't work. Like that noises? That's part, part of that's the station. And part of that's the fact that it's feeding back. Now, when I shut this off, will it do the code? No. See, when you shut it off, it's supposed to do the code. Uh, I think it's the call signs of one of the guys that helped design it. Uh, it's all bells and whistles. It's all software. So the guys that built this thing are really good at software. All right, let's put it this way. There's so many versions of the software, maybe they're not that good at the software. But the Russian guys, you got to give them credit. Now, people say, oh, the Russian radio works better. Um, it's the same circuit. Now, it is possible that the Russians put some um, uh, metal cans around some of the parts. If you ever saw the inside of a really good digital shortwave radio, some of the microprocessor is in a can, so it doesn't radiate through the radio. Well, this is a this is a um, a train wreck as far as design. Okay, and that's because uh, the guys that got this together, they're ham radio guys, and uh, they know software. And I don't know them personally to know how good they are with radio design, but uh, they built this thing. Everybody's copying it. There's a million versions of it, and when you really read the reviews, you you get a review of a guy that knows radios, and he says it's not worth what, it's not worth fifty bucks or it's not. Those are the real reviews, okay. But what I'm saying is, software-wise, the waterfall display—that's what I actually wanted, okay. I wanted like a spectrum analyzer. See, when you have the display on, it's picking itself up, so you really can't go up and down looking at those those spikes to see what they are because it's the radio itself. Now, if you put this radio on an outside antenna that has shielded wire leading from this radio. Now you're picking up signals and bringing them down to the radio. And the radio signals aren't getting on the antenna. So go look at those videos. You'll see how good it looks. The noise floor is very good. And you see the guy dialing it through. And then uh, I have been able to get um, the weather channel, NOAA weather. I got that on there on, uh, on this one, uh, 162.475. Uh, online it said it would be at... 162.549, but it wasn't. I found it, but I had to have this, this, the display off. Okay? And uh, that's one thing. And the other thing I told you, bought this for at the end of the night, those last two hours. I have two hours every night at the end where I'm tired. I sit in a chair and I'm like, I don't like that. I like to have something to do. And uh, I, I, I cornered a couple neighbors. And basically, they're watching television. And they told me what shows they watch. And they're watching 
shows that are on stations like me tv and that old 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 stuff and then uh they're in the chair and they're dozing off i kind of figured that out okay and i i want something else okay that's what i'm working on now uh uh, the last two hours of my day, I would like to be uh, uh, quiet, but some type of work. And I don't want to do meditation. I do that. I do that too. Okay. But those last two hours, man, you're just sitting there waiting for bedtime. And I don't want that. And one guy in the comments like, it says, start drinking. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm from, uh, my mother's family, most of them were alcoholics. Okay. Serious alcohol problem in my mother's side of the family. Okay. And I'm one of the non-drinkers. And there's one other girl. All right. And they die extra early because they're heavy smokers and heavy drinkers. And I lost some of my cousins in their 50s, okay? My favorite cousins are all gone, uh, except for my father's side. I got a, a cousin left on that side. But it's sad, you know? And I sit there at the end of the day, and that's the stuff you kind of think about, you know, if things had been different, if, 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 if this radio was designed better. And eventually, someone's going to come out with a, they're coming out with a new model of this. So, uh, you know, and they're not going to suck me in. Uh, I'd actually have to borrow one and try it for a few days before I'll buy it. And I told you, I have at least 50 radios. I know R71As, well, I got nine of those, you know, and, and those are great radios, but they're not portable. You know, you go, you go lay in bed, see this thing you could lay in bed with, okay, and listen, and you can get FM with it, and AM is terrible, you don't want to listen to AM broadcasts on this thing, and my, R, my uh, DX390 is just too big, and I have the DX398, which is smaller, but it really sucks down battery, so I have to use Eno loops in it when I use it. Otherwise, uh, you can go, you can blow through a, a, a set of batteries in five hours, and uh, batteries are getting very expensive. But I just wanted to show you, you know, I bought a second one, and uh, you got to see me troubleshooting the first one when it goes into self oscillation with the display, and of course I had to have a signal going in, and then uh, I did. I finally on the other way, I disconnected the antenna. And I went from the uh, the oscillator into this, uh, the signal generator into this, and I soldered two wires on the circuit board. And I used a shielded wire, and it was a little bit better. But I ended up going backwards, uh, following from the, pro uh, the processor uh, mixer area all the way back with an antenna. And I got to that one chip that was out, out to lunch. And I'll also I tried the, uh, the internal... Um, RF amp works on the AM broadcast band. The other one, it wouldn't do nothing. So I know that front end of that radio has been whacked and repackaged, okay? And that piece of tape that was on there, it looked, made it look like it was sealed. That's not on the one I just bought. So that made me think it was, you know, it was brand new. But it is what it is, you know? Uh, one guy said in the comments section, buying stuff from China is hit and miss. But I'm going to tell you, the construction of this looks really good. I mean, this looks really good. And like I said, centigrade 340 that's where you start and this is just as bad as a soldering iron if you can't solder you're not going to do any better with this okay i was really good at soldering okay i was cert nasa certified in this one company but i'm going to tell you what's happening to me now hands are a little shaky my eyesight's not as good uh, besides hands being shaky uh they don't move like they used to you know uh, I, I have to set up the soldering joint in a certain position and then come in with the solder. And it, it does work. Okay, I can solder. I can do still a few tiny ones on it. But the other thing, too, is uh, what would go with this good with this is one of those microscopes. Like, go watch the guys uh, fixing cell phones. And the inside of this is just like a cell phone. Okay, it's very tiny. All the resistors are small. And uh, I think that's it. All right, that's it.